this video on business and entrepreneurship education grade 9. In this video, you will learn about unit 14, which is on statement of financial position. The second lesson for this unit is about the format of statement of financial position. The learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this unit, you will be able to draw the statement of financial position Identify non-current assets, current assets, non-current liabilities, current liabilities and owner's equity. Calculate total assets, owner's equity and total capital and liabilities. As stated in the first video, the first part of the statement of financial position consists of assets. We first need to record all the non-current assets like land and building, machinery and equipment and motor vehicles. Then we have to calculate the total non-current assets. After that, we need to record all current assets like for example, inventory, trade receivables, cash in hand and cash at bank. Again, we need to calculate the total current assets. Once the total non-current assets and total current assets are known, we can now calculate the total assets by adding both. After having recorded all the assets, we can now move on to the liabilities part. First, we need to record capital, add profit for the year, and minus drawings. This total is known as owner's equity. After that, we need to record non-current liabilities like bank loan, followed by current liabilities like trade payables. To calculate the total capital and liabilities, remember we have to add owner's equity, bank loan and trade payables. As just mentioned, the formula to calculate total assets is total assets is equal to non-current assets add current assets. The formula to calculate owner's equity is owner's equity is equal to capital add profit for the year less drawings. And the formula to calculate total capital and liabilities is owner's equity add non-current liabilities add current liabilities. Let's look at an example of statement of financial position. So, Bob's statement of financial position as at 31st December 2019 is prepared from the information given. As you can see on the screen, Bob's Enterprise has trade payables of 7,000 rupees, motor vehicles is 80,000 rupees, furniture amounts to 20,000 rupees, trade receivables is 15,000 rupees, inventory 3,000 rupees, cash in hand 12,000 rupees, cash at bank 60 thousand rupees the capital is 120,000 rupees profit for the year amounts to 25,000 rupees drawings 2,000 rupees and bank loan of 40,000 rupees let us now identify which of the following are non-current assets current assets non-current liabilities current liabilities and owners equity Take some time to identify the elements. So, trade payable 
is a current liability. Motor vehicle is a non-current asset. Furniture, non-current asset. Trade receivables is a current asset. Inventory, current asset. Cash in hand, again, is a current asset. Cash at bank is a current asset. Capital, owner's equity. Profit for the year, owner's equity. Drawings, owner's equity. And finally, bank loan is a non-current liability. Having identified the elements of each, now let's fill in the statement of financial position. First, we need to record all assets, starting from non-current assets. As non-current assets, we have motor vehicles of 80,000 rupees and furniture 20,000 rupees. The amounts are recorded in the third column. After that, we need to calculate the total non-current assets. So, 80,000 rupees add 20,000 rupees, this gives a total of 100,000 rupees. Then, we need to record all current assets. Inventory, 3,000 rupees. Trade receivables, 15,000 rupees. Cash in hand, 12,000 rupees and cash at bank 60,000 rupees. The amounts of all current assets are recorded in the second column and the total current asset amount to 90,000 rupees. This amount is recorded in the third column. Having recorded all non-current assets and all current assets, we can now calculate the total assets. To obtain the total assets, we need to add the total non-current assets and total current assets together. Therefore, 100,000 rupees add 90,000 rupees. This gives a total assets of 190,000 rupees. Moving on, we are going to record all capital and liabilities. The capital is 120,000 rupees. Profit for the year 25,000 rupees. And we need to deduct drawings of 2,000 rupees. As you can see, the amount of drawings is put into brackets as it should be deducted. This gives us an amount of 143,000 as owner's equity. We now need to record all non-current liabilities. As non-current liabilities, we have bank loan of 40,000 rupees, again recorded in the third column. Bob also has trade payables as current liabilities and the amount is 7,000 rupees, recorded in the third column. Therefore, the total capital and liabilities is 143,000 rupees. Add 40,000 rupees bank loan. Add 7,000 rupees trade payables. This gives a total of 190,000 rupees. As you can see on the screen, the total assets and total capital and liabilities are equal. Let's look at another example. Johnny is an entrepreneur who makes shoes. Use the following information to prepare his statement of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2019. So, Johnny has machinery of 800,000 rupees, fixtures and fittings 100,000 rupees, inventory 25,000 rupees, trade receivables 10,000 rupees, cash at bank 40,000 rupees, capital 500,000 rupees, 
drawings 20,000 rupees, profit for the year 80,000 rupees, bank loan 325,000 rupees, and trade payables of 90,000 rupees. Well, let's now fill in the statement of financial position for Johnny. So, as non-current assets, we have machinery, 800,000 rupees, and fixtures and fittings, 100,000 rupees. This gives a total non-current assets of 900,000 rupees. After that, we have to record all current assets. First, we have inventory, 25,000 rupees. Second, trade receivables, 10,000 rupees. And last, cash at bank, 40,000 rupees. This gives a total current assets of 75,000 rupees. Therefore, the total assets is equal to 900,000 rupees at 75,000 rupees. This gives a total assets of 975,000 rupees. Let's now record the capital and liabilities. First, we have capital of 500,000 rupees. Second, profit for the year 80,000 rupees. Less drawings 20,000 rupees. Remember to put drawings amount into brackets. Therefore, owner's equity is 560,000 rupees. As non-current liabilities, we have bank loan amounting to 325,000 rupees. And as current liabilities, we have trade payables of 90,000 rupees. Therefore, this gives a total capital and liabilities of 975,000 rupees. Let us look at the summary of steps in preparing the statement of financial position. As you've seen in the previous videos, firstly, we have to identify the type of business transaction. That is, whether it is a cash, bank or credit transaction. Secondly, we have to identify which accounts are affected. That is, which account needs to be debited and which account needs to be credited. As seen in Unit 10, this is known as double entry system. Having completed the posting in Ledger, we now have to balance the accounts. Remember how we identified the balance carried down and balance brought down in Unit 11? After having completed the balancing of accounts, we have to prepare the trial balance. I believe you still remember how to draw a trial balance. If not, go back to the video on Unit 12. Remember, total debits is equal to total credits. Then we have to draw the income statement. It consists of revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, income, expenses, and profit for the year. This was seen in Unit 13. And finally, we have to complete the statement of financial position, which include non-current assets, current assets, capital, non-current liabilities, and current liabilities. Here are some additional links that you may use for further understanding on the topic. Well, students, we've now reached the end of today's lesson. Don't forget to keep watching the videos. That's all for now. Until next time, good luck.